All right, well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Eric Salachi. Eric is spelled E-R-I-K. Salachi is S-I-L-A-C-C-I. -C -C I'm joined by the uh, Ray Kelly uh, Alameda County Sheriff's Office as well as representatives from the East Bay Regional Parks Police District. Today at approximately 2.30 p.m., a citizen volunteer uh, was uh, searching for Philip Krychik in the area of the northern part of the Pleasanton Ridge, Open Space Ridge area. Uh, and he, that person located an individual, a deceased individual, matching the description of Philip Krychik, who's been missing uh, approximately three weeks, a little over three weeks. Um, Currently, there are detectives from the Pleasanton Police Department, as well as officers and detectives from the East Bay Regional Parks Police Department assisting in the uh, early stages of this part of the investigation, collecting evidence. Uh, they will be joined uh, momentarily by representatives from the Alameda County Sheriff's uh, Coroner Bureau, um, who will uh, assist with the identification of the body and the uh, cause, formal cause of death investigation. Um, the decedent was located approximately 250 feet off of a, um, a game trail um, on the ridge area, the northern part of the ridge. Um, on behalf of the Pleasanton Police Department, we'd like to uh, extend our sincere condolences and um, to the Krychik family as well as offer any support we can to the family and friends who've uh, just been searching and spending countless hours looking for Philip. Um, we have numerous, numerous uh, outside agencies, neighboring agencies who have assisted with this search effort as well as the investigation. And we would uh, like to thank all of those agencies at this time as well. Um, we are unable to positively identify the decedent at this time. We're gonna wait for the Alameda County Sheriff's uh, Bureau to make that determination as well as the cause of death as we uh, move forward. Um, I encourage any people or members of the uh, community who have any information to assist us. Uh, maybe they saw Philip prior to this incident. Uh, any other information to please contact the Pleasanton Police Department as our investigation is still continuing uh, as we try to find out, uh, number one, you know, what happened to Philip that day and also um, come up with a concrete timeline. Um, that's all I have right now. I'll hand it over to uh, Sergeant Kelly. Well, as, as you just heard, uh, I'll just say this. We're very heartbroken here today. Uh, our, our teams, uh, our collective uh, group of law enforcement partners, as well as uh, I know our community search team that has never wavered, never given up uh, out there. Uh, so we're, we're all pretty heartbroken. Uh, from the Coroner's Bureau perspective, we'll do a, uh, a positive identification, but everything uh, leads us to believe that, that it's likely that we did find Philip up there uh, on the ridge. We uh, obviously uh, his his family is forefront in our thoughts uh, and prayers right now. Um, but uh, I can just say that collectively that our 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 mood is very somber. We're we're pretty heartbroken over this. We've invested a lot of time and energy and care uh, as a community, uh, as one team, uh, uh, to find Philip uh, and to bring him home. Uh, we wanted to bring him home alive uh, and safe. And so to deliver this news today is hard for for all of us. So. Um, I know there'll be a lot of questions as to uh, how, how, why did we not find him sooner? How did we not get there sooner? Uh, we're willing to answer those questions. There's a, there's a lot of factors at play um, and, and nothing is, is perfect, but uh, a lot of energy went into this right now. Uh, in addition to uh, work, the East Bay Regional Parks Police Department will be leading uh, the uh, follow-up investigation, working with our coroner's bureau uh, and potentially uh, we'll bring in our crime lab if, if the park district wants the crime lab to come in, we'll do that. We'll treat this case uh, with the utmost uh, investigative integrity, make sure we're, we're checking everything, make sure we're treating it uh, at, at the most highest level uh, to make sure we don't miss anything. Because at the end of the day, I think everybody, especially his family, wants answers as to why and how. How did this happen? Why did it happen? Um, and they deserve those answers, so we'll do everything in our power to make sure that we're doing our job correctly and then we can get those, them those answers and as well as our community that's really dedicated a tremendous amount of time and effort and love and energy in, into this case. Ray, are there signs of foul play? 
Uh, we, we just got to the scene not too long ago. We're at, as I said, we're, we're, we're starting big. We'll move in small with our personnel. Uh, obviously, um, we, we have uh, who we believe to be fill up up there. And, and we, we wanna, as we approach the scene, use every detail that anytime we, you walk into a scene like that, you don't wanna disturb anything before it's documented. So we'll use all our latest technology to do that. So as of right now, no, we, we, we just have uh, a person we believe to be fill up in, a, in an area that is covered that, that is not readily visible and seen from, from the trail. I think East Bay Parks will have them come up uh, and, and answer a little more questions about the geographics of that area and kind of how it all, how all that works. Uh, we know based on uh, where we located uh, the remains that, that he was off the running course for sure. Um, I'll have our partners from East Bay explain that. Last year. Uh, Captain Breed with uh, East Bay Regional Parks. Hello, Captain Lance Breed, East Bay Regional Park District Police Department. So as Ray just alluded to, uh, we believe that Philip was located in a very remote area of the park. It's not a designated trail. It is a, uh, as our partners with Pleasanton alluded to, it's a game trail. He was located about 250 yards off of that trail uh, near a tree. Uh, and that's what we know at this point. We are gonna be looking into uh, further details on what uh, transpired, but at this point, it's a very preliminary investigation, and I just want to reiterate that our hearts and thoughts go out to the Krychev family. Is the terrain such that if somebody got injured in that area and they could get out of that area, they could do more than like a buggy train and drop? It, it appears, I have not been up there, but it appears from the, um, the reports that I've received that this area is not um, readily available to, to get to. It's not traveled by the public. It's in, it's in an area that's not designated for recreation. So it would not be something that someone would come across. What is a game trail and how far is that game trail area from where a lot of those uh, officials and crews were during the, the most rugged part of the search? So when we say a game trail, something that is uh, used by uh, a, a deer, um, a raccoon, something that beats down the grass to designate it looks like a trail. So Philip could have very easily thought it was a trail that he was on, um, but these are very common in all of our facilities. These type of trails are not designated, so it's very easy to get disoriented out there. So that's what, at this point, um, that's all we have to conclude is that he went off of that trail. Yeah. We're, we're, Go ahead. So, right now, we, we just did a preliminary measurement just based on, on the GPS that we have. Um, and, and it's about uh, maybe a quarter mile, close to 2,000 feet from uh, the end of the trail where we believe Philip should have made a turn to go back to the start of his route. Um, so, we're, we're looking into that now. I'm, I'm also on, uh, talking to our search and rescue people. We're going over our maps to see uh, did, we, did we get into that area? Did we search that area? Um, it's like I said, it's quite a bit off of the trail, uh, roughly at this point, estimate of about 2,000 feet, quarter mile. Um, you could, based on the terrain there, you could continue on straight and not realize that you had gone off the trail, um, potentially. So we're looking into all that now, and, and then I'm, I'm reach, we're reaching back to our search and rescue people uh, to see where, where and the areas that we searched, and you know that it, it the uh, the environment out there. Uh, it plays tricks on your eyes. Uh, you're, you're trying to look through multiple layers of density, foliage, vegetation, and so you know, there's a lot of factors at play, but uh, uh, we, we'll, uh, we'll have more information on that uh, and the exact search of that area um, and, and the specifics of the search and how close we were uh, or were not close. So. Any other questions at this time? You said uh, it was a volunteer, was a volunteer that came across. How many volunteers were out there today that you know of? I know uh, there were still people searching over the course, but what we've seen it looked like the numbers were a lot more. Yeah, my understanding is this was an individual who was just set out either on his own or with a small uh, search party, uh, located a the deceased individual, and then contacted additional folks who came in, uh, friends uh, and other people who had been up there for a while. And from there, they contacted the East Bay Regional Parks Police District, uh, Police Department. The family was notified shortly after that. 
we've been in constant contact with the family and, and they are aware of, um, of what has occurred today, yes. No, no, no. This is on the northern part of the ridge, the northern uh, north of even where the command post was, north of Muller Ranch. And is there any kind of evidence of maybe trying to stay alive for this long and wait for volunteers to come or any word on? I mean, because it's been about a month. Right. We've only been on scene for a short time. From when this initial call came in, we we don't have that information. Right. We don't have any information right now. No. Right, so the search and rescue folks, we had a designated route that Philip uh, planned to take that day based on his GPS uh, coordinates on his phone uh, that he would then use on his watch to follow a route. And that is the area that the search and rescue folks started from. Um, generally, on these types of uh, search and rescue uh, operations, that information, they don't have that information. So we all felt like we had a very good starting point to start that search from. And so um, the area where we think he would have gone was very thoroughly searched. Um, so yeah. are you saying that what he was found? Was we, we believe based on, um, on, on where he was found that he should have made a turn. He should have made a turn to probably go back down to where he originally parked and he didn't make that turn. And or he got disoriented up there and ended up where he was found. That's, that's uh, what it appears happens at this point. Obviously it's early on, but does it appear at all as like though you may have changed locations? Uh, Too early to tell. We don't have that information yet. Yeah. If there's no other questions, uh, we'll stick around for a little bit if, you, uh, if there's any other uh, individual uh, inquiries that we have. We will be releasing a, an update on a press release um, here shortly with some information that we've provided today. And um, again, on behalf of the Pleasanton Police Department, we'd like to extend our condolences to the Krychik family. Um, we have uh, been there with them from the start and we intend to be there uh, with them throughout the remaining uh, days and weeks that, that lie ahead. And we'd also like to thank all of, um, all of our partners, uh, law enforcement partners from around the area. The Alameda County Sheriff's Office has been uh, instrumental in this effort along with East Bay Regional Parks Police District, uh, all of our neighboring agencies. Um, and uh, I had met with the Krychik family last week and they wanted to extend their thanks to just the community of Pleasanton, the outpouring of support that they've had from uh, just the community members, all the local businesses that have donated um, you know, food, water, supplies for their search effort, um, as well as the uh, city of Pleasanton. So um, you know, we just wanted to extend that. So thank you. Thank you.